Bear Breath Podcast is back. NFL Divisional Weekend is upon us. I'm the Bear, Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz in our New York studio. Uh, Will and Sammy P will join us later uh, in the gambling group chat. So wild card weekend, super wild card weekend. I should I stand corrected. It's come and gone. Six games, uh, underdogs won three outright. Did very good uh, against the number. So it's left us with uh, I think a couple of I mean, the matchups. I think we kind of well, I shouldn't say the match we kind of wanted because I think people would have liked to have seen uh, Dallas San Francisco again. Even though I don't know, I I, I kind of like the fact that someone else we've seen what San Francisco has done to Dallas. Uh, the last couple of years, but we get that Chiefs Bills matchup uh, late Sunday. Overall uh, thoughts coming out of Wild Card Weekend and into the, these uh, weekends four games, Jeff. Yeah, my thoughts are you need a dynamic quarterback to win a Super Bowl. I mean, you know, like I, I know that maybe the one counter to that is is what Jared Goff is doing in Detroit. Um, but you look at what Jordan Love did in that game and how dynamic he was against a guy like Dak Prescott. Very clear who in that game, who was the better quarterback, who was more dynamic, who made better plays. Look at the at, at the Texans Browns game, right? Who was more dynamic, who made better throws. Now Flacco obviously came back down to earth. We had Houston special teams uh, defensive score, so I was pretty pumped that they got that yeah. obviously twice. You only win one time, but it happened yep. twice. Um, <clears throat> and so you know, the, the more dynamic quarterback tends to win these games. Um, now, obviously, the 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 offense you play in can help you be more dynamic. But that's my biggest takeaway. And we look at, at this weekend and we look at the AFC and you have you have Lamar and Stroud and Allen and Mahomes, the NFC, the the kind of disparity in quarterbacks where you have Purdy against Love and you have Goff and Mayfield, but still um big spreads, right? Two two games near mm-hmm. 10 points, one game near a touchdown. But division round weekend bear is the best weekend in the National Football League. We should have some great games. Yeah, no, no, it is. It, I, I have always equated the divisional round with these like two games each day and kind, kind of like you get the, the one seeds involved again. It's it's kind of like that second round NCAA tournament uh, on, on Saturday and Sunday where you get some of the upsets first round, but then you, then you start getting some really good uh, high powered matchups in, in the second round. So I, I kind of, th- those are my favorite uh, rounds of the playoffs as well that th- this weekend in the NFL and then, and then that Saturday, Sunday, uh, in the NCAA tournament, because I, th- I think there are a lot of correlations between uh, what happens from the wild card round to the divisional round, and then first round, second round uh, in in the tournament. So uh, we'll see if the underdogs can uh, continue their their hot streak, or if the rested teams and the teams that have been the best teams all year long uh, kind of make a statement this weekend. Well, let's get to to one of those underdogs that you might like this weekend. Let's talk about the first game you're going to wager on here. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Detroit, six and a half point favorite. Tampa Bay and Detroit this season are both 12 and six against the spread, tied for the league best record against the spread. Tampa Bay won and covered against the Eagles on Monday night. And Lions won, did not cover the three against the Rams on Sunday. Bear, where are we going here? I know Tampa did not look great uh, in, in the regular season against the Lions. But I like them here, plus the points. I think with how well we saw Baker Mayfield play um, last week, I know that was against an Eagles team that was kind of just thrown in the towel. Uh, Mayfield did not play well that first in 19 and 37 and a pick. Uh, they weren't able to run the ball at all. Goff had a huge game. I'm on our St. Brown had a huge game. But uh, I, I think the way the, the Bucks now have – uh, re- refound that the offense after last couple of games of regular season weren't able to, to score an offensive touchdown. Uh, here they are. Maybe that game against the Eagles helped get their confidence back and help get, get them on the right page. And I think but on the flip side, I worry about Jared Goff in this spot against a Tampa defense, which shows a lot of looks, brings a lot of pressure from, from all over the place. Uh, I didn't fully trust him the other night. I, I, as someone who who had Detroit money line in that game against the Rams, like I, I was concerned, and I probably that was a weird game because it felt like Detroit maybe should have been beating them easily, the Rams, and then at the end of the game, it was like maybe kind of felt like the Rams should have won the game. So it, it was a weird game. Uh, we'll we'll see if the Lions defense can do better than. Uh, they they did against Stafford and that and I mean obviously there's no Stafford and Nakua here, but uh, 
Lions defense, I think there's reason for concern. And I think on on the flip side, I think there's concern with, with, with how golf can handle Tampa, this defense second time around. So I, because of where we are on the podcast now, I took six and a half. Uh, there is a seven at circa available that, that uh, isn't widely available, so that's why I can't I can't say I'm taking seven here because I can't play it at seven. But uh, you want to hold out and wait. Take the Bucks plus seven, maybe if it gets there. But if not, for this pod's purposes, I'll take Tampa plus the uh, the six and a half. Do you think they win outright? Because I feel like if you take an underdog to cover in the playoffs, you should also expect them to maybe win outright. Do you expect them to win this game? Um, I, I give them a chance to win the game. I mean, if you go back and look at that, despite how bad uh, Tampa played in that game, it was a 10, six game late in the third quarter. So it wasn't like the, the lions were really capitalizing on all these opportunities that they had uh, w- w- with, yeah. with Tampa. So like I, I'll, I'll play, I played, I'll play Tampa plus the points and I'll put a, I'll put a half a unit or so on Tampa uh, on, on the money line as well. Yeah. Yeah, because that that that, that um, is usually a theory that I like to, I, that yeah. I like to subscribe to. Like 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 I'll, I won't necessarily only play an underdog um, if I think they can win outright. But certainly, I in in a game like this where the number is kind of closeish, uh, if I'm taking a dog plus six six and a half, obviously I do think that they have a chance to win outright. It's hard for me to back the Lions here because of their pass defense, right? Um, 425 yards allowed last week. They were really good in the red zone. That's why the Rams didn't score enough points, but their red zone defense here has not been very good. Baker Mayfield is, is not the best quarterback remaining, but he does get the ball in the hands of his weapons. Godwin, Mike Evans, we saw last weekend, or really was, I guess it was Monday night now, that gets a bad defense. Philly's not a good defense. The Baker Mayfield was able to take advantage of that. And this is this screams, even if you don't think they can win this game, I mean, backdoor cover, right? Lines up. 14. Uh, the, the problem with that, though, is that is Todd Bowles going to go for two. Uh, you know, the, right. the math says go for two, right? But I mean, even if they're they're down 10, right? Driving late, like I trust them to to get this over the uh, over the end line. I have Mike Evans, by the way, over 60 and a half receiving yards in this game. Just throw that aside there. I just think that we saw last weekend his ability to, to get open, and he just dropped that one pass. Otherwise, he'd be over that number uh, very easily. Let's get to game number two. Yeah, you, 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 were, you were right on with weekend. your wide receiver. You were right on with your wide receiver props last week, by the way. If McCall Harmon could like like find the ball in the air, that you we would have uh, cashed that one pretty easily too. Like uh, like just find ter- like, find the ball. He was o- he was open twice for deep passes and did not. The ball was thrown perfectly both times. It just didn't look up in the in the didn't want to dive in that cold air. It is what it is. Let's move on to game number two. Bear Green Bay Packers at San Francisco 49ers. Niners. Fair by nine and a half right now. Both teams this season were above 50% covering the spread. We know the Packers won last week is a big underdog. The Niners obviously on a bye hosting the Packers. Worth noting here, Bear. Niners at home with Shanahan in the playoffs. 4-0 straight up. 4-0 against the spread, which is interesting because Shanahan as a favorite typically is not terribly good. But in the playoffs at home, given rest, the Niners have been a juggernaut. And I think I know where you're going with this one. I, th- I, th- I think you're back in the trend here with Shanahan and the Niners. Yeah, I, I am. And not only back in the trend, I'm, b- I'm backing a team that's been the best team in the NFC uh, all year long. And I think the the rest, uh, the last couple of weeks, the regular, the last week under the regular season where they had nothing to play for, and, and then the idle week uh, in the NFL playoffs when they started last week, a couple of weeks off to kind of heal up some of those injuries. I, I would think McCaffrey would be good to go. I think party any lingering injuries that he had, he'll be, he'll be healed up. So I, I think the rest will do them good. And I think they come out and remind people how good and how dominant they have been uh, against the NFC this year. And look, this is not a, I don't think the, the, the Packers are good uh, or I think the Packers are overrated. I think it was a flu out of and nothing. I think the Packers are a good team, but again, you, you're, you were a seven point underdog for a reason at Dallas. You won the game outright. Now you got to go on the road again and compete or potentially win as a bigger underdog uh, against a better team than you beat last week, a, a more well coached team than uh, you, you faced last week. I just don't like the situation for, for Green Bay here at all, I think the Niners come out, and I think they win the game uh, very convincingly. 
Well, we cover this game, as we do all games, extensively in the gambling group chat, Bear. Uh, it's going to be me and you and Will and a special guest. We have a special guest. Sammy P's back, everyone. Well, maybe back. We don't know. Is he back, Bear? Fine. We'll find out next. Gambling group chat. Gambling group chat is back. Uh, myself, Will Hill, Jeff. And as promised last week, uh, we have a new addition to the gambling group. Coach Nick Saban, formerly of Alabama, has now joined uh, the Bear Bets podcast, being that Sammy P ditched us last week. One and done. He's replaced. And Coach Saban has uh, joined us to replace Sammy P. So we appreciate Coach Saban and uh, explaining the process to us during uh, NFL playoff time. Sammy P, I appreciate all your uh, your hard work, but you have been, uh, been replaced by the greatest college football coach at all time. Well, I guess it makes sense. Um, <laughs> I don't really have much to add. I didn't know the team was going to have <laughs> cardboard cutout of Nick Saban ready to go. I'm blushing now. Um, Good. My one, my one note of defense is that if you think I wanted to go to a wedding with no NFL access in the middle of the playoffs, you are mistaken. It was one of those weddings where I was told we're going. So it didn't really matter. I didn't really have a say in it. And um, no American channels in the rooms in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. There were more chances for me to watch adult films than there were to watch NFL games. So that was <laughs> that's not really my cup of tea, but that's that's where we were that last weekend. It, it, a couple of funny asides on that, and it has nothing to do with your menu te television selection in the room. I, I'm actually going to be in Turks and Caicos during the Super Bowl, and I was actually there during the Rams uh, Bengals Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and they they brought it in on on an, and the internet kept buffing buffering rather and, and like we were all like on delay we missed like part of the final drive uh, when the rams ultimately went down and scored it, it, it was a, a disaster but yet we're going to turks and caicos again for the Super Bowl weekend and then i remember one of my uh, good friends got married on derby day 2004 it would have been the year smarty jones uh won the kentucky derby and I remember sitting in the uh in, in the back room prior to the Prior to the uh, the the ceremony, just we're all huddled around a TV watching the uh, watching the watching the Derby. But uh, anybody else? And anybody else have a a good like sports and like general life story? Like I, I like like people who get married during college football season on a Saturday. That that's like that's like someone you wouldn't even want to uh, to to relate yourself with, right, Jeff? There's no chance. I, I had a friend who actually got married in September and was like, you're not coming. I was like, nope, you got it right. Uh, thanks for the invite, but I will not be there. Um, it's, just, it's, just not gonna, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's my job. I mean, get married in, in uh, spring, summer, winter. You just don't get married during the fall. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm just not gonna be there. I've been honest about it. I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. So um, I did get married on the first day of the tampering period of agency. And so that was quite a, a unique experience to get married and then immediately find my agent and ask him, do I have a deal or not? Um, not even like, you know, during the reception, like immediately after the wedding, I found him in cocktail hour and was like, are we good? He's like, we're good. I was like, all right, cool. Let's celebrate the, for the party. I, 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 no I had no idea that I just basically agreed to a deal. Yeah, she had no idea. I just agreed to deal essentially uh, with the Giants on on wedding night. So that's my that's my one sports related wedding story. Well, you got to have something. I will say though, the girls like I, I know girls like to have those fall weddings, the foliage, the background, the pictures. So that's a tough spot. But I agree, you can't interfere with the football. You have to be considerate of your guests. I mean, to have it during NFL playoffs, to have it during these big games. I mean, it just it's so inconsiderate. It's just just uh, it's it's a reason to, to lose a friendship over it. To be honest, I have this too, Bear. This is one of my favorite tweets of all time. I'm not sure if we could take this full. This is uh, somebody watching a football game. That's the pew at mass <laughs> so the phone is turned sideways and uh yeah this this wedding goer needed kansas plus nine and a half but you can't you can't really get much more degenerate than that in the pew at the church with the game on silent that 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 that, that that's a person that that i want winner in my book friend for life for sure that, that, that that's a that's one of our people for sure and so we got Excuse me. We got two games this weekend. Uh, the two big, well, four, two games Saturday, two games Sunday. Uh, the two big favorites uh, play on Saturday. And, and I get before we, I guess before we handicap each of the games, I ask the question: like, if one of these two big favorites were to lose, uh, who do you think it might be, Sammy? 
the two big favorites would lose, probably Baltimore, given the weather and the wind. Uh, this is a perfect game for San Francisco and Green Bay. Everything is probably going to go right for the Niners. I, I get and Jeff's going to talk about the numbers on Lamar. I don't want to steal his thunder. Lamar has not been great in this role. But when you think about, you know, a low of 20 degrees, winds from 15 to 20, that could affect both teams. And, and I know Houston wants to throw the football with C.J. Stroud. It's going to affect Houston. It's also going to affect Lamar. It affects these running teams that like to do pitches and stuff like that. So I would say because of the weather in Baltimore, the crab cake is going to be, again, 20 degrees is the low on Saturday. I think that throws a wrench in more games than there would be in San Francisco and Green Bay. Jeff, make your case there then for, uh, Sammy alluded to it, make your case there for uh, Baltimore struggling. Well, I mean, Lamar just has to buck a lot of trends to cover this spread. I, I know we're talking about just outright winning, but he has not played as well. It's a small sample size in, in four playoff games. He completes about 10% less passes, less touchdowns, more interceptions. The offense doesn't score as many points. And then he just has not been good as a big favorite. One in eight covering a spread of seven and a half points or more as a big favorite off 12 days rest guys one and six against the spread I, I know these are against the spread numbers but if this game becomes a touchdown game a field goal game they go in either direction right I mean Baltimore to me feels like all the pressures on them in this game they're the one seed they have the MVP here comes a young Texas uh, the Texans team rookie quarterback rookie coach they're a dome team going outside that typically has not fared well for dome teams they have nothing to lose in this game right no matter what happens for Houston in this game they know CJ Stroud is their guy for the future. And they hear they come to, to, to Baltimore. Lamar has not played well in these spots before. All the pressure on Baltimore in, in, in every single way in this game. On the other side, look, the Niners, I think, are just a juggernaut at home. They're healthy. The Packers back on the road again as a as a big underdog. I, I just don't think the Packers can withstand sort of what the Niners can do to them. I feel like the Texans can do that a little bit more. So to me, Baltimore would be the team who would get upset if we're asking me who to lose in this game. And Will, if you look at that first, uh, if you look at the first game of the year where the Ravens and Texans played, it was a really ugly game. Texans, Texans had 268 total yards, Ravens 265, a neat, ugly lot of penalties. It was C.J. Stroud's first uh, regular season starts. You would expect him to have been improved by then. But it was a 7-6 game at halftime, so it wasn't like the Ravens actually just went out and dominated Houston the first time. So we'll see if if the injuries that the Texans have, and obviously with the Ravens with some injuries as well, uh, how that affects the game. And if the Ravens indeed are a little bit rusty, but a lot of times, don't you think some of these underdogs who win uh, that wild card game, maybe they get a little overvalued in the, in, in the second round, maybe in the, both the case of both the Texans and the Packers here? Uh, I do. I think it's so easy to fall victim to recency bias because the Ravens didn't play last weekend. The 49ers didn't play. We all sat there and watched. It was the only game on. We watched the Texans win by a million points. We watched the Packers with, with a huge upset, especially if you bet on those teams, you get the positive reinforcement. Hey, I bet on them. They won. I get to bet on them again. And I'm getting a whole bunch of points. Uh, growing up, like, it, it, you know, in the 90s, mid 90s, these divisional games were always bloodbaths. The Cowboys, the 49ers, the Packers, they were dominant teams. Nobody could put a glove on them. Recently, with more parity, uh, it, it's been, you know, it, it hasn't been as much of a trend, but uh, I just think that Jeff mentioned it. You got a dome team from Houston going outdoors, a Baltimore team that's rested, that's hungry. I think you could probably throw that first game of the season out, uh, you know, out the window because that was Lamar and Baltimore offense adjusting to a new system. That was Stroud's first game. I just think Baltimore gets a lead. They they pull they pull away. I, you know, could, could Houston backdoor them at nine and a half? Sure, absolutely. But I think Baltimore will be in control here. I'd be shocked if Baltimore lost this game. This would be a terrible loss for them. Harbaugh's typically been good off a of bye. I think. People have also gotten carried away, or they did get carried away with Flacco and the Browns. That's still 38-year-old Joe Flacco was out of the league for a long time. He had a couple of nice games, and it was, wow, this Browns team is great. He was awful last week, so I don't know. When you go through the Texans' schedule, who they've really played, who they've really beat, have they really been tested um, on defense? I saw a stat. I think it was DVOA. They are second to worst in the league in terms of missed tackles. So I think Washington led the league with the most missed tackles. Houston was second with 130 missed tackles. If you can't tackle against Baltimore, you're in for a long day. That crowd will be going crazy. Uh, I tend to think Baltimore rolls here. We do. We do, though. We fall for these underdogs, yes. especially the Cinderella's. This happens in March Madness all the time. When a team like let's go back to last year in March when Princeton beats Arizona. Princeton's the 15 against the two beat Arizona. Everybody that didn't bet Princeton in the beginning 
is now betting Princeton against Creighton, and they're taking them from nine down to nine and a half, down to nine, eight and a half, eight, and then Creighton covers all the numbers against Princeton. The Packer side to me, when you talk to guys in Vegas and you call the Superbook and they go, yeah, eight of every 10 money line bets are on Green Bay. That's a problem. And those are usually the teams, Bear, that you don't want to be on. The Packers are going to be the side that everybody wants to bet. And it's ironic because everybody bet the Cowboys last week. So there are going to be a lot of people watching this show that are thinking, well, Cowboys were a seven-point favorite, drilled, or got drilled by the Packers, and now the Packers are getting nine and a half. What am I missing? Well, you're missing the fact that the power rating and the, the true numbers of the gambling science have this game literally San Francisco 12 or 13. Like, that's my number right now. I'm 12 and a half. San Fran is 12 and a half points better than Green Bay. If this game is played 100 times, the number probably lands between 12 and 13 in the power rating. You can't overreact to one random football game. And remember, last I, don't, I forget what the uh, the number in the in the Vikings Giants game was. Remember, remember, the Giants went to Minnesota and beat the Vikings, and then uh, oh, the Giants they might have a shot against the Eagles, and the Eagles went out oh, absolutely yeah. uh, and annihilated the, the Giants. <laughs> and, and, and if you go if you if you go back. Since uh, our, our research department looked this up for us, uh, you go back since the wild card format in, it began in '78. Uh, underdogs that w of seven or more points that win in that wild card round, second round two and nine straight up, four and seven uh, ATS. So to to Sammy's point, only two of them have won that second game in the divisional round. One was the uh, the '87 Vikings against the 49ers, and the other were the '96 uh, Jaguars against the. Uh, against the Broncos. So typically it's, it is one and done. Uh, we'll see if either of them can pull uh, another up. So in, in either of those games, is there something other, other than the, uh, the, the side or total that you guys might a, a prop or a derivative or something? My favorite bet of the weekend is San Francisco team total over. You can shop around and get, pick your juice. Basically there's 28 and a half minus 135, 29 and a half minus 120 or, or so. Um, I think I took it over 29 and a half. Basically my bet is San Francisco is going to score 30 plus. I can't see a scenario here where San Francisco doesn't get their points. This is still a green Bay team. They gave up 30 points to the Carolina Panthers. They couldn't hold the lead against Tommy DeVito. If you look at some of the quarterbacks they played, it's uh, Jaron Hall on Sunday night. It's Brett Rippon versus the Rams. They have really middling stats on defense uh, and they, didn't play if you look at the green green bay during the regular season they didn't play the cowboys the ravens the 49ers the bills the dolphins they played a very soft schedule they are not a good defensive team you get san francisco healthy rested shanahan time to prepare uh to me san francisco is going to score in the 30s i wouldn't even be shocked if they hit 40 i think san francisco is basically going to score every time they touch the ball uh just keep this in mind i don't know if it's something that's going to trigger a bet for me but keep this in mind lafleur has been electing to receive recently so green bay to score first green bay first quarter i I don't like them in the game, so I don't know if I'll take that. But most of these teams decide to kick off and defer. Uh, Green Bay, last week they took the ball. On Thanksgiving, they took the ball. They went right down and scored. So keep that in mind uh, when you look at some of those props. Green Bay has been electing to receive. It could be it could be a little rainy there. And I'm looking at the weather forecast for Santa Clara Saturday. Um, winds 10 to 15, 60, 70% chance of rain. So I, I, I don't know if that's bad enough to affect anything in that game uh that field uh, area traditionally has had some problems so uh we'll see sammy was there anything in uh, either of those saturday games that you uh that you liked that we may have missed yeah he was talking about team total i was looking first half total so i need both teams to sort of tango and float over 24 and a half i think this is very possible san fran gets three touchdowns in the first half and then you need the packers to score once like a 21-7 uh, 17, 10 type first half. I mean, we know San Francisco is going to come out guns blazing and, and Shanahan and LaFleur are both very good with the script, right? Those first few drives, those first couple quarters, we saw that Detroit and Rams game. I mean, it was bang, 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 bang first half. And then the second half turned into a crawl because the team has made adjustments. And I do think LaFleur and Shanahan will figure things out in the second half, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but early we should get touchdowns. You know, over 24 and a half to me, it, it sort of bleeds into what Will said. I think San Francisco is going to name its score, but I like it more first half, and I like it with the two teams involved at 24 and a half. 
I'll get to my my best bet later. Will just took my whole best bet. Thanks, buddy. Um, no, that, yeah, that's a good argument for for Niners team total over. I love that one. The the the, uh, the other one I like, guys, um, is Aaron Jones over sixteen and a half rush attempts. He's been over twenty four straight games. Is what the Packers have sort of leaned on down the stretch. But also the the one vulnerable spot for the Niners is their run defense. It's twenty sixth in EPA. I feel like if the Packers are going to try to keep this game close, even if the Niners do score, I think we all agree they're going to score a bunch of points. They got to stick to to what they do well what they've done well lately run the football play action pass move the pocket and that's the one vulnerable spot for the Niners defense so I, so I think Aaron Jones is going to have to get the ball a lot for the Packers to keep this game relatively close early on so I like Jones here over 16 and a half uh, 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 rushes I'll, as I mentioned earlier in the show I, I do like the, the Niners here minus the uh, the nine and a half as well. First game I'll see, and we'll see if we. Uh, I, I will say this: I, I, I like San Francisco too. I would lay it before I took it. I, my team total over is my favorite play. San Francisco had three of like the five best performances this year. They destroyed Dallas on Sunday night. They buried Philly in Philly. They buried Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Those were all extremely impressive results. Those all don't quite look as good right now with the Cowboys losing, the Jags falling apart, the Eagles falling apart. So just something to keep in mind. But does that maybe indicate how much head and shoulders the Niners are in the NFC above those other teams? Yeah, yeah no, it's like, the Michigan no, no. argument. Well, Michigan didn't beat anybody, and then Michigan beat the shit out of Washington. Like, we can't, you know, sometimes we get oh. lost in, like, trying Say to Say that not... again, Sammy. Michigan beat the Say shit again. out of Washington. <laughs> yeah! But Ooh. leading up to the game, oh, it's Michigan didn't play anybody. And, like... I. It does, sometimes it doesn't matter. Like you can only beat who you beat. You can only play who you play. The, the obviously to Will's point, the loss against Baltimore that was sort of head scratching on Christmas. But you throw that result out, it's been dominance for most of the season since they got healthy off the bye. San Francisco has rolled almost everybody, and I I know that those teams maybe aren't as good as we once thought, but they they pounded most of those teams, pounded them. Jeff, how many starters on the offensive side of the ball does Washington have coming back next year? At the current number, zero. Z zero. Okay. And they lost they like, coach, two backup they, offensive linemen. They did hire a good coach. I like Jed Fish, but again, they yeah. have they literally have zero guys on offense right now returning. They have zero scholarship quarterbacks right now. They have they lost everyone. Everyone's gone. And guess what? Kim DeBoer in Alabama, that whole roster has left too. So um that's the new world we're in now. You know, if, if you're a if you have a new coach, man, teams are calling, giving you some NL money and you're bouncing. Do you have the uh do you actually have the paper depth chart with you, the one that you highlighted and next and everything? Is that you, yes. you, you carry that around? You carry yeah. that around with you yeah, at all to continually it, update it? It's yeah, it's in my favorites on my phone. It's right here. Here you go. Yep. I haven't crossed. I, had, I I need to cross more out though. I haven't crossed out the center, or both right guards. That so, I haven't crossed out Jeremy Bernard yet. Um, I haven't crossed out the backup quarterback yet. I mean, I could just. This is the offense. I just I just crossed the whole thing out. It just it's <laughs> it's gutted. You can't see it, but it's gutted. I'm all you know what? I'll tweet out again for you guys later. Don't worry. Please please do. I I, I, I need to stay abreast as to what what's going on with the uh, with the Washington program. Thank I you. do I do know Pal. I do know Pal and Spencer back actually. Uh, it's going to go to Miami. We can help, hopefully help the Canes out. Canes need a uh, help with that secondary as well. But to, to come back all the way back around to what we were talking about, and Sammy, I think hit it best. <laughs> I remember, I, I remember in 2013 it would have been with Florida State when people were like, "Oh, who's Florida State beating the ACC?" Is 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 to quote Big Cat like booty ass or whatever, or whatever booty cheeks or whatever 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 category the computer already spit out. But I'm like, all right, it doesn't matter. They're beating the crap out of everybody. They're really really good. And like, there's a difference between like schedule doesn't necessarily make how good a particular team is. So uh, I agree with Sammy. I think these Niners are head and shoulders. I have them plus one ten plus uh, minus one twenty five. I bet them again. Uh, last weekend to win the NFC because at the very least, if I want to, if as long as they win this week, I can, I can buy some back um, in the NFC Championship game on the dog if if I want to. So who will the who will their potential opponents be? We got the two games on Sunday now. Uh, Tampa at Detroit. Detroit six and a half. 
uh, 48 and a half. And uh, the, the one that we're all waiting for on Sunday night, uh, Buffalo two and a half, 45 and a half over, uh, over the Chiefs. And Jeff, I, I, I'm excited for you. You're going to the Buffalo Kansas City game. I hope people out there lead you to uh, some great wings. Bills Mafia will hopefully will have you doing the uh, playing beer pong, and I want you jumping off the roof of a of a truck or a car right onto the beer pong table. And I want I want to see some videos of that uh, on Saturday, and hopefully you'll survive and actually get to see a a, a pretty good game and, and a game that right now uh, I know this is a betting podcast and you're looking for advice, but I don't know if I want any part of this game. Uh, the, the Bills injuries worry me. Uh, same time, can the Chiefs kind of expose some of the injuries they have uh, at linebacker? Uh, continually bogged down in the red zone, kicking those short field goals last week against the Dolphins. Like yeah. there, there are plenty of concerns on both sides here. Yet I could see both teams. I, I can make a case for for either team to win, Jeff. So, uh, you have you have any thoughts on the game that you're going to be going to? Well, I'll be cold. I know that for for certain. Um, I am looking for for tailgate. Hit me up, anyone with a with any tailgates. I'll, I'll gladly show up. Um, look, this game is the Bills Super Bowl, right? They've been waiting for this game for years now to host the Kansas City Chiefs uh, in their place. They're 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 a two seed. They're looked upon as a favorite to get to the Super Bowl. We know what their power ranking is. Sammy's talked about it for weeks now, despite their record of how good their team actually is. Now, the injuries to Bear are a real concern. They have no linebackers and no secondary players left. But can the Chiefs catch the football, right? I mean, that's been a problem for them all season long, no matter who they play. I thought offensively, though, against the Dolphins, they looked really good. They just continue to have those errors, right? The block in the back, uh, you know, a drop pass, the sort of derailed drives. You can't do that. In, in Buffalo, but I think Tra uh, Travis Kelsey over receptions and I think Isaac Pacheco over rushing yards to me are, are plays to make a Kansas City because of the linebacker issues in Buffalo. The last time the Chiefs played in Buffalo, it's, it was 2000, uh, excuse me, uh, 2020. So it wasn't recent per se, but they ran the ball for 265 yards. Like they went in there and said, we're going to run the football and take the crowd out of it. And I feel like in this game, they can do that exact same thing. Let, let's run the football, establish the line of scrimmage, and just take it to Buffalo. So that's why I like those wagers. We, I don't think we see Kelsey drop three passes again, but uh, this going to be a lot of fun, man. And the pressure's all in Buffalo in this spot where they haven't been this, you know, kind of had this pressure in a long time. To me, it's an under game. I, I think we've talked about it all year. I wish I bet it accordingly more because the Chiefs has just been a, uh, an ATM if you just bet their unders. There's this perception that it's Mahomes, it's Allen. I think a lot of people think, oh, it's going to be you know, 31, 28, back and forth, that overtime game two years ago, which was the same round, same time slot uh, two years ago. It's a little deja vu for the Bills. That was 42, 36. These are not th those type of teams anymore. The Bills run the ball a lot. The Chiefs don't have a lot of weapons, but they're better on defense. To me, this is more like a 23, 20 type of game. Uh, I, I don't love the side either. I would lean towards the Chiefs just because it's Mahomes. I'm getting points. Bills are beat up. Plus, you get extra rest with the Chiefs. Chiefs played on Saturday. Bills had to play Monday late afternoon. And remember, the Chiefs basically had a bye week 18. They got to sit all of their important players. So should be a fun game. Uh, mentioning the game two years ago reminded me of something. I wish I brought this up last week. There are new overtime rules. So just keep that in mind for live betting. Uh, once you go to overtime, if you score a touchdown first, the other team gets a chance to match. So maybe you play defense defense first. Maybe if you do give up the touchdown, you go for two. So plus one, plus two and a half, plus one and a half, those numbers are more valuable because a game could land on one. Just keep that in mind. Would be a little bit ironic if, you know, that this was the reason they changed the overtime rules was Chiefs Bills a couple years ago, pretty much. It would be ironic if this goes to overtime again, which is not impossible. I think I saw 11, 12 to one uh, for this game to go to overtime. So, so keep that in mind with the rules for live betting, all, all those types of things. Uh, a derivative, I like Mahomes. I didn't see the number, but I'm sure his over rushing yards is something I'll play. He just goes back to pass. He has nobody open. His only option is to run. So should be a fun game. This is really, this is the best rivalry in the NFL. I mean, it was Seahawks 49ers for a bit. It was Steelers Ravens for a while. It was Manning versus Brady. We don't really have that one now. This is it. Mahomes Allen. This should be a lot of fun. If the Bills can't get him this year with the, this version of the Chiefs in Buffalo, you start to wonder if you're ever going to beat them. Not only have five of the last six Chief games gone under, Kansas City is the best under team in the NFL this season. Crazy to think that, yes. given the Mahomes and Kelsey and Reed, this this team is winning with defense. I made the total 40. It's 45 and a half, so I tend to agree with Will there. And, and look, I have to bring this part up because nobody else is going to bring it up. We all have our Bills futures for the most part. 
I've got Bill's AFC Super Bowl. Will had it a week before. He bet it before the uh, Kansas City game. Is there a world? I don't have a tinfoil hat, but is there a world where the NFL has more to gain by the Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl? Can we all have? I mean, the Swifties, the ratings. No. no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Can no. Dude, dude, a, 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 like a, like a buff, dude. Sammy, a Buffalo Detroit Super Bowl would do wonders for the National Football League. No, I, 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 more I, than Mahomes and Kelsey. Have been there before. If you're taking well, the Taylor well, Swift in, this, in consideration, maybe because of that. But like from a from a from a storyline perspective, and fans showing up to Vegas, and the numbers, I think a Buffalo Detroit would do. Kansas City is not a major market. People tune in because of Mahomes. I guess if Taylor Swift is going to be there, people watch anyways. I don't think they're going to rig the game for the for the Chiefs, man. I, I, Buffalo, right. their story we went over would this. do better, in my opinion, than Kansas City being back. We went over this earlier in the year. She's going to be in Japan. She's got shows in Japan yeah. for Super Bowl weekend, so it's not. Oh, you're right. Yeah, she you, does. Yeah, not even yeah. going to be there. You you call yourself Swifties? I'm the one looking at the concert schedule back in October when we brought this up. I mean, may, may, maybe she could like fly there and back her, but it might, might it might be tough. I'm trying to shoot some holes in your conspiracy theory there, Sammy. I didn't say they would rig the game either. I'm just saying, like, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if Kansas City got back to the Super Bowl. And let's also not act like sure. Taylor Swift well, cares about the environment. She's been flying all over the world. Don't lie. You looked it up because you, you, you don't think she's flying like uh, 30, uh, 38F in the uh, in, in the back of like a uh, uh, JAL from uh, <laughs> to. <laughs> LAX. And, you, know, you, you don't think that'll be the flight route? You think you think that might she might have some more comfortable accommodations for a flight like that? But I get it. It it, it, it is. I've been playing G five all the way. Exactly. When we travel the Schwartz way, G five private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's waiting out here at Tito Borough. I'll, I'll be there in a few minutes, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, our first game. Tampa, Detroit. I actually like Tampa plus the six and a half. I, I think that Bulls defense, I think they can give uh, Goff problems. I, I think he's someone who every time he drops back to pass, I don't fully trust him. Uh, I think he can really confuse. I think Bulls and that defense can really confuse Goff and make his life miserable. Yes, the Detroit can run the ball a little bit better, but I, I don't fully trust Jared Goff in this spot. Um, and at the same time, you look at what that Tampa offense did to fill Look, I know the Eagles defense has been one of the worst in the league lately, but they, they could have, I mean, Evans was wide open on a couple of plays, a couple of drops. I mean, they potentially could have had uh, even, even more points on the board uh, than they did. So now they got to go on the road, but I, this, this Tampa story I think is real. And, and, and Baker looked okay last week. He looked, he looked healthy. And again, I, I hate, uh, being on the uh, like the underdog that won the previous week, but it was only a field goal, and it, it kind of felt like uh, Tampa was the right side all week going into that game against a dead team walking Philly. So yeah, I'm gonna hop on board here, and I'm gonna I took the uh, the Bucks plus six and a half uh, uh, is the one underdog I really can uh, get behind this week with a lot of confidence. So uh, Will, any thoughts on uh, Tampa Detroit? You, you hate the Bucks? You like the Bucks? What do you think? I'll take you on head to head here. I'll, I'll take Perfect. the lines. I, I can't bet a team. I, I know it's six and a half. I just don't give Tampa. I can't see them winning this game. And I don't want to take like under a touchdown with a team that I would just be shocked if they won. I go back to week six and I know it was a long time ago, but uh, Tampa did nothing on offense, six points, th uh, two of 13 on third down. They only had 13 first downs. Now you're going to switch venues. That is, it going to be a crazy crowd Sunday afternoon. Detroit can at least stop the run or rush the passer Detroit winning this game by a touchdown. Doesn't seem unreasonable to me. I, I think Detroit's the better team. Uh, nah, look, I have always felt like the division round is sort of where Cinderella goes to die. If Detroit wins this game and they don't cover, I guess I'll live with it. But I think Detroit's marching on here to the final four. Detroit in the NFC title game. What what a world this has become. And uh, it's kind of fun here. This is just a, such a random matchup. Tampa was such a long shot to even win this division, a bad division at that. We get a, an, an old uh, NFC North rematch, an NFC Central rematch. These teams used to be in the same division. But I think Detroit wins. I think they cover. I don't love being on like all the favorites here, but I just have a hard time seeing Tampa win this game. Square Willie. Yes. The Rams did put 425 yards of offense down the Lions' throat. That's alarming. 
um, to think about the fact that Detroit was maybe a little lucky to win that game, um, all things considered. But they did win. It was awesome to watch the Lions fans celebrate. I was happy for the fans. Don't really care about the team. But let's let's talk about this. Do we get more seven in the market? Um, it's six and a half at most places. But if you're in a circus state, if you're in Nevada, Illinois, Iowa, but Colorado, you can take seven with the box. And I'd love to be able to do that. That full seven is a big deal. So I, I haven't made a bet yet. I said on chicken dinner this week I was going to wait for seven. We might get there, guys. We we might get. I mean, we taped this on a Thursday. By the time we get to Saturday and Sunday, there's a chance we get to seven. I mean, if Circa's at seven, there's a chance we get DraftKings, FanDuel, MGM to seven. So I think if you like the favorite, lay it right now. Lay six and a half. And if you like Tampa, you might just want to wait for a full seven. I rarely advocate for a full game over, but how do we not get a lot of points in this game? We have two really bad pass defenses, right? The the, the Bucks saw the second most yards in the NFL to players in the slot where the Lions do really well. Amon Ron St. Brown, Sam Laporter, now he's coming back off that injury, obviously, was a little bit uh, slow in the game against uh, the Rams. On the flip side, Detroit, Sammy mentioned it, 425 yards last weekend. They played really well in the red zone. They forced a lot of field goals. The Lions are, do not have a particularly great red zone defense. And they've had four straight games. They've allowed 140 yards plus to a single wide receiver. Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua. I, I think Mike Evans has a big game. He would have been over his number easily if he caught that one deep pass early in the game against Philly. And to me, this is just a, a, a high-scoring, uh, up-tempo game. A lot of, lot of wide receiver yards, a lot of quarterback yards. It's inside. The weather's good. Baker and Tampa Bay aren't going to be intimidated by, by, by kind of the environment. Also, you mentioned it, Bear. Tampa Bay brings a lot of pressure, right? They're going to pressure Goff. Well, also, on the flip side of that is if they don't get home, there's one-on-one -on -one coverage against all these Lions skill players. Like, there's an opportunity for big plays to be made for the Lions. So, to me, I see a lot of points this game. I would actually advocate for the over, which is pretty rare for me to take. I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, in the in the indoor environment, and if, and if you do get a scenario where, uh, like, the Lions do get those matchups and capitalize and they do get up. You're, you're, this is going to be, I think this could be one of those in game betting fests as well, where you can maybe like live bet uh, Baker Mayfield over attempts or Jared Goff over attempts uh, and things like that, depending on how the, uh, the score gets. And I, I know, Will, you're, you're always paying attention to those things and uh, keeping us abreast on, on, on some of those derivatives. Is there anything else in that in either of these games on a uh, Sunday that caught your eye? No, I think we covered it, but it's funny. You know, we sit here, we analyze these games from top to bottom. We look at everything. If you look at last week, there were what, six games. So six teams won. The Chiefs fumbled with them like a minute left up 20 points running out the clock. That was the only turnover any of the six winning teams had. So sometimes that's that simple as, hey, who's going to turn the ball over? That's who wins. I mean, we don't know who's going to turn it over, but I thought that was an interesting stat. One turnover between the six winning teams, and it was in just total garbage time. Well, we've had some turnover in the uh, in the in the coaching carousel here mike mccarthy staying uh in dallas and now as of this uh recording right now uh it, it appears arthur blank is hell-bent on hiring bill belichick which i i i think that's an obvious upgrade on the uh the falcon head coaching position if indeed they are able to close that deal but how would what else has to happen jeff i'll start with you uh, to make this work like you don't have a quarterback on the roster. Like we, we, we kind of talked about it earlier yeah. in the year. Like, 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 is this a spot where maybe would like a bill Belichick, Russell Wilson, one year marriage Would that, oh. would that be something that would work? No chance. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no chance. Um, zero, zero chance. Um, look, when Bill Belichick has had Josh McDaniels as offensive coordinator, which I would imagine he'd bring him with him, they've been good on offense, right? They, even the, the Mac Jones year, they made the playoffs with, with this setup. So to me, it's maybe draft a quarterback. You, you know, you've spent now first round draft picks, top 10 draft picks, three straight years in offensive weapons. You, like, you, those guys are there. Your offensive line mm -hmm. is there. You got to get a quarterback. It's not Russell Wilson. It's probably not Kirk Cousins. It's probably go to the draft, get a young guy, work with Josh McDaniels, work with Belichick and grow this thing moving forward. The one thing I will, I will keep saying this, guys, wherever Bill Belichick goes, he cannot be in charge of choosing players on offense. 
Defensively, fine. He's drafted well on defense, but you cannot let him choose the quarterback. You can't let him choose any of the skill position players. Let someone else do that. Let let him coach the team, the defense. Let McDaniels coach the offense. It can work in that way. Russell Wilson couldn't do Sean Payton. Can you imagine Bill Belichick? So that's not happening. I don't think Cousins is going there. <laughs> it's draft a quarterback who's ever sort of there in that in that range of, of yeah. Bo Nix, they, maybe they pick an eight. JJ yep. McCarthy. I, I, I doubt. I doubt JJ McCarthy fits there. I mean, Michael Penix probably too early at eight. Maybe a trade up and get someone. But I, to, to me, it's young quarterback, and that's the way to go if you're if you're Belichick there in Atlanta. And it would then appear that Harbaugh potentially to the Chargers would, would work with this team out there for Rabel uh, to Seattle, which would be a good eye. Titans, uh, I haven't heard much on that that position. And it, were were you guys surprised that that um, McCarthy w- was kept by by Jerry Jones? Because it it, it, it seems it's a little weird because for for all the the. I don't want to say criticism or what it may be a criticism or as much as Jerry Jones has talked about, he doesn't pull the trigger on, right. on firing coaches very often. Do, do, you, do you think what we were all maybe in a little bit of a prisoner of the moment type deal, just with how, how poorly the Cowboys season ended and just us kind, kind of being like aware of some of the bonehead uh, decisions and play calling and clock management that McCarthy did, or uh, was there? Is this a mistake, Sammy? Do you think to to keep McCarthy? I mean, if you ha- you have a a Belichick, a Harbaugh, a Vrabel, like you've got some pretty good uh, coaching candidates out there, and and to keep Mike McCarthy to uh, to, to disagree one with with Greg Olson, I don't think anybody was running through a wall or running over people to hire Mike McCarthy if he got fired. Like, I don't I, I don't know. It feels a little prisoner in the moment to say fire him, but at the same time, I think kind of. You know what he is. This was the best team they've had, though, with Dak Prescott. You have the two seed. You fought all season for that two seed. You're going to be at home until the NFC Championship, and you get 50 points pretty much in your eye. That's bad, and that's that's coaching, right? It was it was a lack of a game plan defensively. Dan Quinn, I, that I think to me it was more baffling they got shredded on defense than them to come out and like not score. I mean, they did get points, but I think there's a fundamental issue there in Dallas. That's a team that I don't want to use the term front runner, but they have a lot of guys in that locker room that like to play from ahead and don't have the adversity to play from behind. We've seen this a lot. And I mean, when was the last time the Cowboys won an NFC championship game, the mid nineties, yep. you got to go way back, 95, yeah. way back to the last time this team contended for a super bowl. And I don't know. I mean, that was a puzzling um, retainment of McCarthy. I would have gotten rid of him. I'm not a GM or an owner though. So what do I know? I still think though, like the craziest situation is there's a world where Chicago is going to draft the rookie quarterback and take Caleb Williams. And they're going to keep the little rascal all grown up, Matt Eberflus to coach fields. And I, I, or not fields, Caleb Williams. And then if the team doesn't do well under Caleb, they're going to fire Eberflus and give him two head coaches and two Chicago has been doing the same thing for a decade. Now they draft a young quarterback with an incumbent coach and an incumbent coordinator. And then it doesn't work. They fire the coach and coordinator and then give this young quarterback, a new coach and a new coordinator. Now they did fire the OC Luke Getze. So they're going to bring in a new coordinator with an incumbent coach. But if the coach doesn't do well next year with the rookie quarterback, they're going to fire the coach and keep the coordinator. Like what, what the hell is going on in Chicago? That to me, that's the most puzzling decision. Fire the coordinator, keep the coach, and then maybe take a rookie quarterback. Well, I mean, I, no, I mean, I, I know he, that Jones has a history of keeping these coaches longer than he should. I mean, Garrett was there forever. Garrett was there like a decade. And it was like every year, is this going to be the year? Is this going to be the year? So I know he has a history of holding on to these guys too long. And he likes to be the star of the show. Jerry Jones does. Even that being said, I thought Sunday was enough to do it. I thought they were going to fire him. Maybe they reached out to Belichick. Maybe they reached out to Harbaugh before they got rid of McCarthy and said, hey, would you be interested? They got feedback that, no, this isn't going to work, whatever. And they said, you know what? We can't get Harbaugh. We can't get Belichick. Maybe we'll just stick with him. It would have been fascinating to 
to hear, uh, you know, be a fly on the wall these last few days between what's going on in Philly, what's going on in Dallas, Belichick, to hear these little inner workings of like, hey, let's not get rid of him until we have a guy. But that being said, I am surprised they kept him. I would have moved on. We, we, Will, Will mentioned to... the number one point I have. Sorry, sorry, Barry. What's that? Will, oh, no, Will you mentioned good. the point that I think is lost when you fi- when you fire a coach. Okay, it's who are you going to hire that's better, right? So if you fire McCarthy, who on the market right now is going to take that job and be a better coach? With that job comes Jerry Jones. With that job comes Stephen Jones. Right now, their 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 director of player personnel is great, and he's he has more influence now. Will does as far as choosing players, and they've been fine choosing players. But you still get Jerry Jones meddling in everything you do, and so that job requires a certain type of coach. So if you fire McCarthy, who is better for that job? If Belichick, to your point, Will said no. If Harbaugh said no, I'm not sure I can name someone right now who'd be better for that job, who wants that job, right? And secondly. When you have a head coach who has a side of the ball, Mike McCarthy does the offense, and that side is good, that coach gets another couple of years, right? If you're Brandon Staley and you're a defense coach and your defense stinks, you're out of there, right? If you're Nick Sirianni and you do nothing but except scream at Chiefs fans after you win, you're probably out of there, right? Like McCarthy buys himself time because his offense is good and he's an offensive coach. If his offense was bad, I promise you he'd be out of there. So I think that those are the reasons why – it makes a little bit of sense to keep McCarthy. If you fire him, who are you hiring? Is Vrabel that much better than McCarthy? I don't. I don't know. McCarthy wins a lot of football games. It is you're not getting Ben Johnson? So that I think is is the point that Will's making. Is that like if you fire him, who are you hiring? I don't have a great answer for that. You, you mentioned Sirianni. I, well, what do, what do you think happens in, in, in Philly, Jeff? Because it I mean. Again, it could be, I mean, just the way the season ended and the absolute collapse is certainly alarming. And, and you mentioned that he really doesn't handle the offense. He doesn't yeah. handle the defense. He delegates and uh, the, 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 the ordinary they brought in on defense was was terrible. The midseason move uh, didn't work. And it's, but at the same time, they didn't nearly win the Super Bowl last year. And, and the year before they got to the playoffs yeah. and it, and but on the flip side, you, you talk. It's like kind of like the opposite of what you were saying about Jerry Jones, and like not really rushing to make to make a change. This is a team that got rid of Peterson what a year or two removed from winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. They fired Chip after a couple of ten and six seasons. Yeah. So it's like this, this is kind of like uh, Philly Northeast knee jerk reaction. Do, do, yeah. do you think Sirianni survives this? And they also fired Andy Reid after one bad season, too, right? Now, he had been there forever, and his time was sort of up in Philly. Look, the Sirianni thing is really interesting, right? Because you can make the case that, you know, he just needs new coordinators because Gannon left, and and we, you know, Eagles fans mock, mock Gannon. Uh, I think they miss him as Matt Patricia was calling plays at the end of the season. And then, obviously, Shane Steichen left. And you can make the case, I think, if you're Sirianni, like, hey, Look, I, I I just hired the wrong coaches. I just I really pr- pr- promoted fr- uh, fr- fr- uh, from within was was what he did. So let's go out and hire new OC, new DC, and let's run it back. But guys, the Eagles roster right now, it, Kelsey, I think he will retire. Even though it's, it's not, you know, he said yesterday that, that he has not announced it yet. I think he will eventually retire. Lane Johnson's getting a year older, right tackle. You're probably losing Fletcher Cox and and, and Brandon Graham. Like your your secondary needs a lot of work. Your line, you have a lot of holes on your roster now, kind of sort of piling up. So, you're asking Sirianni now to obviously replace those players, plus hire new coordinators. It, it's a big upheaval in Philly, but that's how he keeps his job of saying I'll hire new new coordinators and we'll run it back. I made the playoffs three years in a row now. Was in the Super Bowl. I can do this. Let me hire some different coaches. And the problem is too financially. They just paid Jalen Hurts, what, $255 million? And we all know, because we've covered this league for a long time, when you give the quarterback the bag, it's tougher to keep everybody else. I mean, look at Kansas City right now. Yeah, Kansas City can't afford any receivers because they have all this money tied into the quarterback, and the tight end makes a lot of money. So, obviously, it's easier to win in the NFL when you have a quarterback on a rookie deal. Jalen Hurts is making, what, $50 million a year right now. So it's going to be tougher for them to bring in and pay better players because they've paid the quarterback. So it's crazy to me. You're a player two away from winning the Super Bowl, 
And now the next year, we're talking about what are the fundamental flaws in Philly? And it's it's a fair conversation. That thing has come undone, and it's not going to be easy to sew it back together. Yeah, I, I think we'll hang on. I think uh, if you just read the report, they, they're having meetings, coming up with plans to replace the coordinators, get this back on track. I, I understand how bad it looked the last six weeks, but like Bear said, they made the playoffs, then they almost won a Super Bowl, then they were 10-1 and one before things fell apart. It will be a little harsh to, to let him go. I think he'll hang on. Maybe he goes into the next year. Hey, if you start 2-4, and four, uh, you're going to be in some trouble. But I, I would think he's the coach next next year, week one at least. Sammy mentioned it earlier. Uh, Bears take Caleb Williams. We think it's a, we think that's done. We think that's a, a, a lot. I mean, we're sitting here what four months out from the draft, three months out from the draft. Uh, we, we think Caleb at, at that minus what 800, 850 or whatever it is to to go number one. We think that's the way the Bears go, uh, Jeff. They would be wise to take Caleb Williams. I, I, I... We mentioned this before, like, and look, Sammy talks about the Bears, obviously, he knows that, that that team well. They do things sometimes that don't make sense. But if you keep Justin Fields, you have to pay Justin Fields. We just talked about how hard it is to build a roster with a good quarterback in Jalen Hurts. Imagine trying to build a roster with a with a bad quarterback. He can't he can't pass the football consistently well when you're paying him $40 million a year. So, like, that's the thing. If you if you decide to keep Justin Fields, you're deciding to pay Justin Fields. Otherwise, what's the point of having him there one more season? So, yeah. Sammy, I think they draft Caleb Williams. I'm not certain, but I wouldn't put it past them to not do it. But do, 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 you think, like you think that they'll take Williams and, and not Drake May or Jaden Daniels or one of the other? If, if no, they're, no, if they're I, taking no, a quarter, no. it, it, it's, it's Williams. Okay. That's, that's, I mean, they traded out of one last year. Or, yeah. Right? They trade out of one last year to take a generational quarterback the next year. So now you have a generational quarterback on your doorstep. It's it's so obvious what they should do. But let's go back to a conversation we had like three or four weeks ago. And I said, look, my big fear is that they are falling for fields. And we saw the reports about the locker room loves Justin Fields. And if he only had more help, and I, I get it. Justin Fields is a lot better with Marvin Harrison Jr. and a left tackle of the future. But as we just talked about in Philly, when you give the quarterback the bag, it becomes harder to build a contender. So what they should do is draft the rookie quarterback. At the end of the day, though, Will, it's the Bears. And the Bears are the Bears because they constantly do dumb stuff. What number would you guys need on May for, for May to be the first pick? Is there a, is there a price? Because I'm not, I, I would expect like Caleb Williams is the rightful favorite, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's May. I, I don't know. Bear, is there a number in mind where like, Hey, at this price, I would bet May to be the first pick I, overall. I, I got May at five fifty back earlier yeah. in the year. And like, would you still bet it like now? Do you, do you wish, do you regret that bet? Cause I, I bet the same thing. I don't feel like I have a great bet, but I, that's around in the ballpark where I'm like, yes, yeah. it's worth a shot at that number, I guess. I, I, I don't, I don't regret it because you, you, you guys know how these, these pre-draft conversations right. change and oh, he, he, the interview yeah. didn't go well or look at this pro day or something uh, personality, it, something th th this this market, I mean, th this market will change dramatically. Uh, I think at least from a from a, a PR standpoint over the next couple of months. So do I ultimately think May will go number one? No, but I, I don't I don't hate myself for uh for, for making that bet. So oh if the Bears take another white quarterback from North Carolina that doesn't pan out. I just <laughs> oh, I, God. I don't know guys. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good point. I I, I Barry, you mentioned something like I, I don't have any money on this and obviously I'm not taking Williams minus eight hundred. But I think there's a point where the number comes crashing down because of the combine, because of leak stuff gets leaked out. Like this number to me is not going to say at 800. There's going to be a period of time where everyone convinces themselves that Drake May is that guy. Maybe it's a great pro day or a great combine or he interviews well and someone leaks out. The Bears are thinking about taking Drake May or someone's training up for Drake May. At some point, you should get a better number in Caleb Williams. So if you like him to go number one, I just wait this thing out because right now, obviously, minus 800, I, you can't advise anyone to take that. I would agree. But you know what? I think we're going to stick. I think we're going to keep Sammy. I, I think we. I think he redeemed himself today. I, I think Coach Saban is fired. Sammy is back. So uh, appreciate you guys. Hopefully uh, you have a great <laughs> wild card. <laughs> that wild card. Nick, gone. Saban, fired. Go to uh, – 
Go to the game day set, like I'm sure you're probably going to be doing. In, in, in hey, the Bear, can I make one more quick point? Okay, I, I wanted to say, can we take Saban down for one more second? Yeah. Um, the Super Bowl MVP market is very fascinating right now because three of the top five contenders are AFC quarterbacks. And as we know, only one can make it. Two of them are going to cannibalize each other this weekend when Mahomes and Allen get together. You can only have one AFC quarterback. Christian McCaffrey is as high as eight to one right now to win the MVP. They are a 10 point favorite against Green Bay. They'll be a seven point favorite against Detroit. They're probably going to the Super Bowl, at which point McCaffrey might be three to one. I don't think it's the worst idea to entertain some McCaffrey eight to one right now because the Niners are likely going to the Super Bowl. And again, two of those dominoes are going to fall in the AFC. And it's interesting because if you think back and assume, and again, you know what to say about assume, if you think they're going to play the Ravens in a rematch, we saw Christian McCaffrey have a, a pretty good first half in that game like, until the, the the turnovers just put the, the 49ers in a position where uh, they couldn't really run McCaffrey anymore. So, yeah, I don't I, I don't hate that. They're, they're, those markets like that, I, I don't dive into them as much, but I certainly see your point there at that number. That could be a... Uh, a play worth making. Did, did Jeff and, and Will, did I, before we go, did you, did you either of you look at that market? Was there anything out there that you saw that might be attractive? I'm looking this up because I don't want to give a, a wrong trivia question, yeah. but when is the last running back to win Super Bowl MVP? I think I know the answer. I just want to be double sure, double check. Hmm. Is, it last, Smith? Is, it, uh, is it Terrell Davis? I think that's it. That's what it says here on Google too. So the, McCaffrey's different because he catches the ball. He runs the ball. Um, but but that is just sort of crazy to think about. I mean, it's been what 25 years now since a running back won the uh, won the Super Bowl MVP. So it doesn't usually go to the running back. But again, McCaffrey's a different story. He's going to touch the ball 25 times. Yep. In the game. No, I know. I know. I'll probably bet it. Yeah. And and the name and the name the name power of Mahomes gave gave it to That's Mahomes over Damian Williams a couple of years ago. Yep. And there was a year. Who was it? Deion yes. Lewis. Yeah. What was the running back for the Patriots where he scored the game winning touchdown? Oh, maybe it was James, James White. White. Like he had three or four right. touchdowns. Brady threw a pick six in the yeah. game. You really could given it to white so it's a <laughs> tie goes to the quarterback here but uh, i'll probably end up betting mccaffrey it's not a bad yeah. angle and then remember that's the thing you gotta you gotta I remember like i'm trying to find it with all these wagers like who ultimately are voting on these things and uh a, a lot of time it's like very simple simple handicap it, it, it would be cruel because we had purdy 22 to 1 to win regular season mvp it would be cruel if he won the super bowl mvp and we had no money on it but that's, that's, that, that's, the, way, that, that's the way the year should end right yeah with that, exactly. you know, that'll be the way that the group chat ends this week. Guys, we'll be back next week. Good luck this week in the divisional round. Lots of great information there in the Gamma group chat. Hope you guys can find yourself some wagers for this weekend. Let's recap the wagers Bear has made so far before we get to our best bets. So far, Bear has Tampa Bay plus six and a half on the road at Detroit, and he has the Niners hosting the Packers, Niners minus nine and a half. All right, Bear, time for our, our best bets. Where are you going with your best wager? You can make, make that Niners minus nine and a half my uh, my best bet. I, I, I teased it up and gave all the reasons uh, earlier on. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the Niners will take care of business. And uh, we, we've seen this deal before with underdogs winning. And then that second game, you kind of get that dose of reality. I, I alluded to uh, the Giants-Eagles last year, gave the number about uh, how touchdown underdogs that win in the wild card tend to yeah. – in the division around during the group chat as well. So I'm going to follow the, uh, the, the football acumen and follow the, uh, the history there. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll lay the nine and a half there with the Niners as my best bet. I'm going to stay in the same game. I have Niners over 30 and a half points. Will made the case early in the game of group chat for this wager, but let's go back. Uh, it was a four weeks ago. Now the Packers were at the Panthers. They allowed 30 points. to The Panthers, do you know how many points bear uh, the Panthers scored the next two weeks of the National Football League season? Do you remember? I, I believe that, that number. I believe that number was like six. The zero, zero. The Panthers zero. scored zero points after the Packers game in the final two weeks of the season. It was zero. Yeah, we saw the you know the the Cowboys eventually get over the team total, took a, a late touchdown, but the Joe Barry Packers defense is not good. They're not good at particularly anything. I have the Niners healthy, rested. Off a of bye, everyone's full, ready to go. And when they have everyone roaring bear, they score a ton of points. So I think the Niners come out early, score points, keep the the uh, the foot down on on the Packers. I have the Niners here over 
30 and a half points. I want to remind everyone, it's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Division Around Weekend. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Bear four games there for uh, people to choose for the free Fox Super 6 game. Again, I'll be in Buffalo this weekend. I'll be freezing my tail off. I looked at weather. Not that bad, Bear. High of 27, like low of 20. It's better than it is now. That's not, that's so, not terrible. I'll, I'll stay warm. That's not, that's not terrible. No, like, it's not wind, terrible. It, 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 how's the wind? Like The wind will obviously be a, a determinant on how, uh, yeah, how good I, it is. I have not. That, that, that's the problem. I'll be warm. I ain't a problem being warm. I have plenty of clothes. I just need a, a tailgate to go to. Tailgate, park and pass. Hit me up. Hit you'll, me up, people. We're coming to Buffalo Saturday. I'm missing Niagara you'll, Falls you'll, movie too. I've never seen it before. I might drive. Yeah, Saturday. you should. You may as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. S- Sabres in town, maybe yeah, on on a little Niagara Falls. Friday? I don't know. Are the Sabres uh, in town on Friday? I'm not going to miss. Uh, I get there Saturday. I'm not missing the game Saturday oh, okay. to go to the Sabres game. So I'll get in Saturday. Go to Niagara Falls. Maybe gamble a little bit on the Canadian side and, and then hop back over and settle in for a night of football on Saturday. Beautiful. Now, it's a, I didn't get into this earlier in the, in the group chat. Like now that you talk about going to the game, like why did the why is Buffalo not putting some type of roof on their new stadium to avoid the issue that we had last week? Like I get you yeah. want a home field advantage. Maybe don't fully enclose it. Maybe you do like a a pseudo roof like SoFi has where you had, you got the roof, but you still have the outdoor kind of environment there, or you have like, yeah. like you have in Dallas where you got the, the whole kind of over the field, but the stands are kind of covered. Yeah. yeah. I like how hard, like, I don't know. I, I, I guess they want people to come to Buffalo and, and, and free opposing, opposing yeah. teams to come and have a half of home field event. That would be the reason I would imagine, but boy, it seems like you could avoid a lot of problems by putting some type of roof on the stadium. But remember bear the, the, the game got canceled, not canceled, but got postponed and moved because no one could get to the stadium. Now, obviously the stadium was full of snow when people arrived, but it didn't get canceled because of the actual like stadium conditions. They, sure. they would have played the game there if anyone could get to the game. Um, so I'm look, I am, I am outdoor on grass football. Like I think everyone should have grass and everyone should play outdoors. So you, you won't find me uh, arguing for, for or arguing for 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 a dome there. But um, yeah, so wish me luck. I'm, I'm sitting I'm sitting in the bill section. I chose tickets in the bill section because I want to get beers thrown on me uh, when I root for the Chiefs. Um, but if you if you're there, I'm not hard to miss. I'll have a Chiefs beanie on. Got some Chiefs sweatpants. Got, got my big Carhartt jacket, and uh, I'm looking forward to a night. Look, the Bills. Bear, I think, are treating this like th- their fans are like, this is the Super Bowl, right? They're playing the Chiefs at home, and the Chiefs are really good still. Like their th- their defense is really good. Like this could be a Chiefs win, and oh, it'd be fun to be there. <laughs> good luck with that, my friend. Thank I, I, you. Yeah, I, 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 I want, I want, I want some, uh, I want some live stream. I want some Instagram videos, like during the uh, during your tailgates and whatever. I so. Got you. Another uh, another episode in the book. We'll be back next week. I'll be down in New York again next uh, with with you next week. Preview AFC and NFC Championship or whatever else happens to, to pop up. Maybe a Australian Open semifinals or finals. Who the who the heck knows? Whatever's going on in the uh, in, in the world of sports. So for, uh, for Will, for Sammy, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Thanks again for listening, downloading, rating, and reviewing for wherever you consume your podcasts and digital media media thank you for checking us out throughout the year and remember watch you bet the more you're losing your life.